Hello, welcome to Dr. Nakamura's lecture series on bridge engineering, number A2. Chapter 2 Design Methods of Bridges. When a bridge is planned, its financial and technical feasibilities are first studied. After a bridge is decided to be built, the type of bridge, the span lengths and widths are chosen from several comparative designs. Structural members consisting of the bridge are then designed to secure safety and other requirements. The design life depends on the purpose of use. It is usually set at 100 years for important bridges. 2.1.1 Allowable Stress Method Stress occurs in the structural member when the external loads such as P1 and P2 are applied, as shown here. The stress must be within the allowable stress, which is the nominal stress divided by the safety factor, as shown in equation 2.1. The yield stress is usually adopted as the nominal stress for steel. The safety factor depends on the material properties and strengths. For steel members, the safety factor of about 1.7 is usually adopted. Exercise 2.1 Suppose that a steel bar with a cross-sectional area A is subjected to the tension due to the dead load MD and that due to the live load NL. Verify its safety by the allowable stress method. Note that A equals 9600 square millimeters. Uh, the allowable stress uh, sigma A equals 140 newton per uh, square millimeters, nd equal 800 and nl equal uh, 500 kilonewton. You can get the stress sigma dividing the tension due to nd and nl by the cross-sectional area A, which gives 135.4. This is less than the allowable stress 140 newton per square millimeters and it's okay. Satisfy the safety. 2.1.2 Limit State Design Method Sectional forces such as bending moment occur in the structural member when the external loads are applied. The design loads have uncertainties, which depends on probability of its occurrence. For example, the live load is more uncertain than the dead load, or strong earthquakes rarely occur, but they significantly affect the safety. These uncertainties are considered as the load factor. Materials and members have also uncertainties, such as mechanical properties of steel and concrete, or length and thickness of members. These uncertainties are considered as the resistance factor. Limit states can be defined and used in different codes. The most common one is the ultimate and the serviceability limit states. The ultimate limit state is a state where structures collapse or structural members break. The serviceability limit state is the state where structures do not provide normal and comfortable use. The ultimate limit state is verified by equation 2.2. The sectional force multiplied by the load factor must be within the ultimate strength divided by the resistance factor. Exercise 2.2 
Suppose that a steel bar with a cross-sectional area A is subjected to tension due to the load and D and that due to the load and L. Verify its safety by the limit state design. Note that A equals 9600 square millimeters and the nominal strength, which is the yield strength, sigma y. Uh, equal to 135 uh, newton per uh, square millimeters. Load factor for dead loads gamma d equal 1.05. Load factor for live loads gamma l equal 1.5. Resistance factor gamma r uh, equal 1.2 and nd uh, equal 800 and nl equal 500 kilonewton. Member force M is calculated by multiplying the design force by the load factor. In this case, you have ND and NL with different load factors. So N becomes uh, 1590. Uh, this is within the ultimate strength NU of 1880 kN, which is the yield strength divided by the resistance factor 1.2. So it's okay, uh, satisfy the safety. Chapter 3 Design Laws These are typical laws and actions which should be considered in the design of bridges. Dead load D is a self-weight, such as pavement, slab, steel girders, and gird rails. Live load L is a moving load, such as pedestrians, vehicles, and trains. Natural forces, such as winds, W, earthquake, EQ, and temperature change, T. Structural force is the load which associates with structural characteristics or performance, such as pre-stress forces, PS, creep of concrete, CR, or shrinkage, SR. A structure is subjected to not only one design load, but also two or more loads. So, you have to consider the combination of these design loads, such as A is a permanent load case where only dead load is considered. B is a fluctuating load case where D plus L, D plus TH, D plus L plus TH are considered. C is the accidental load case, where D plus EQ is considered. Let's look at each design load more in detail. 3.2, dead loads, which is the self-weight of a bridge. It can be obtained by multiplying the estimated volume of bridge members with the unit weight of the materials such as RC of 24.5 steel of 77 kN per cubic meters. 3.3 Live loads. People, vehicles, and trains move freely on the bridge. Intensity of the live loads depend on countries and purpose of bridges. In Japan, pedestrian live load is taken 3.5 kN per square meters. Train live load is taken from the actual wheel loads. Road bridges are classified into two categories, A and B road. The live load for A road is applied to bridges on ordinary roads in cities, towns, and villages. The live load B roads is applied to bridges on highways, national roads, and other main roads. The live load have two types. T, 
Livelot for design of slabs and floor beams. L. Livelot for design of girders. The T live load is used to design slabs, stringers, and floor beams. This T load represents the wheel load, which is 100 kN per wheel, as shown in these figures. The L live load is used to design the main girders. It consists of two distributed loads. P1 and P2. The full distributed load of P1 and P2 are loaded in the widths of 5.5 meters and half of them are loaded in other areas. P1 is 10 kN per square meters and P2 is 3.5 kN per square meters for the B load. Exercise 3.1 Calculation of dead loads and live loads. Suppose there is a footbridge with a span length of 20 meters, the walking width of 5 meters, the total width 5.5 meters, RC slab thickness of 30 centimeters, the asphalt pavement thickness of 7 centimeters, and two steel eye girders as shown in these figures. 1. Find the dead load per unit length of a girder. 2. When the pedestrians are fully loaded on a bridge, find the live load per unit length of a girder. Take the pedestrian load as 3.5 kN per square meters. 3. Obtain the bending moment due to the dead load MD and that due to live load ML at the mid span. 1. Dead loads consist of the asphalt pavement, RC slab, RC curb, and steel girder. Find the cross sectional area, which is multiplied by the unit weight. The total is the sum of these four bridge elements. 2. The live load is obtained uh, multiply the walking area by the pedestrian load of 3.5. 3. The gather is subjected to fully distributed load. The bending moment due to the dead load MD and that due to the live load ML at the mid span can be calculated like this. 3.4 winds. Wind load P acting on a bridge is expressed by this equation. The design wind speed UD is the average wind speed at a height of 10 meters and commonly set at 40 meters per second. The drag force acts on the body in the direction of wind stream. It depends on the shape of the body. For example, a drag coefficient for a circular shape is 1.0 and that for a square section 2.0. Gust is a dynamic effect of fluctuating wind speed and commonly set at 1.9. A simple formula is adopted for the design wind load of a Garda bridge as shown in this table. It depends on the ratio of the bridge widths over the height. It is crucial to reduce the wind forces for trains, planes, and cars. The sharp and streamlined shape are adopted as shown in these photos. It is important to find a suitable gather section to reduce the wind forces. In general, the box section or I section suffers relatively large wind forces. 
Wind forces are particularly dominant for long span bridges such as suspension bridges and cable state bridges. Therefore, a streamline box section or a truss section is used for suspension bridges so that winds go through smoothly. Three point five earthquakes. Japan is situated in a seismic zone. We adopt two levels of design earthquakes, L1 earthquake and L2 earthquake. L1 earthquake is a medium strong earthquake which is expected to occur at least a couple of times during the service period. L2 earthquake is an ultra strong earthquake which is expected to occur once in a few hundred years. The seismic coefficient method is the most commonly used design method. When a bridge structure is modeled as a single degree of structure, it can be simplified to a cantilever system with a mass and a spring, as shown in this figure. The seismic force is replaced by a lateral force H, which is the self weight W multiplied by the seismic coefficient KH. Equation 3.3 and 3.4. Where CZ is area coefficient and KH0 standard seismic coefficient, the area coefficient is 1.0 for the high seismic area and 0.85 for the medium seismic area and 0.7 for the low seismic area. The standard seismic coefficient KH0 for L1 earthquake is shown in this figure. It depends on the ground conditions. One is a solid ground such as rocks. 3 is a very soft ground and 2 is a medium soft ground. It also relates with natural period of a structure. L2 earthquake has two types. Type 1 is a plate tectonics earthquake and type 2 is the active fault earthquake. The standard seismic coefficients for L2 earthquake type 1 and type 2 are shown in these figures. These are much much larger than L1 earthquake. There was a very strong earthquake in Kobe 1995. It was magnitude 7.3. Lots of buildings and bridges collapsed. I lived in Kobe at that time, experienced and witnessed this disaster. This is one of the worst incidents. The RCP collapsed over several hundred meters. This continuous plate girder bridge collapsed when the RCP crashed at the intermediate supports. Lots of other bridges had the same failure. This is a simply supported railway bridge. The gada fell down from the abutment. Only the rails survived. More than 6,000 people died by this earthquake. We learned a lot from this tragedy to design a safe bridge against such a big earthquake. That's all for this lecture. See you next lecture.